Hey everyone, this is Darren with Crazy Minnow Studio and welcome back. In our previous video, we went over Salsa's Vizim configuration and completely did not go over the information contained in the expression components within the Vizims. So just to recap, Salsa Vizim configuration requires at least one Vizim to be configured. And each Vizim requires at least one expression component. And in our demonstration in the previous video, we showed how to set up blend shape components, which is what this one is. And then we also demonstrated setting up a bone component. And that's basically operating on this cube that's sitting here under Boxhead's chin. So let's go over these real quick. And uh, the first thing we see under the uh, the component is the name. And this is completely for organizational purposes. It doesn't serve any computational purpose at this point. And we can change that to, uh, what do we want to call this? Say large shape. And, uh, and so basically that just gives this header a new name and that's pretty much all it does so it's but it makes it a little bit easier to see what's what when you're browsing these in say uh, collapsed mode so we can see that this is where our say large shape was so let me go ahead and close these all down open this back up again all right so that's the name and then we come across this animation timings section now across the modules you'll see different things here because uh, certain modules use different aspects. Technically, behind the scenes, there's an on, a hold, and an off timing. Salsa does not use the hold timing uh, for the general Vizims. So all you get to see is the on and off. And you can adjust these to whatever you want. Uh, this basically is how quickly, in seconds, the full-on animation occurs. And this is likewise how long in seconds the full off animation occurs. So you can see that uh, we shut the off down uh, quicker than we animate on. We found these settings to look pretty good overall and they work well with the, I'll go back here real quick, this is gonna be the next video, uh, with the update delay. We'll go into this in the next video, but these settings should be fairly similar because we wanna give the Vizim, the animation, time to go ahead and animate on and off. All right, so disable smoothly. If you are enabling or disabling your character in code, enabling this will cause the animation, if it's on and you disable your character, it will cause the animation to animate off using this off timing. If you don't have this checked, then it will just be instantaneous. It'll basically instantly set it off. And next we have the easing, and this is uh, pretty similar to uh, like web-based animations. We've got uh, linear, circle, cubic, etc. We have tested this out. Cubic out is a quick out and then a slow finish. So it uh, it basically will start animating really quickly and then it'll smoothly slow down to the finish point. We found that to look pretty good and it's also friendly to processor cycles. The next is the controller type and uh, we have several controller types available for 3D purposes, pretty much shape and bone, although you technically could use some of these others as 2D animations on a 3D object, but sprite, texture, material, these are typically 2D based animations. Of course, UMA, if you are using UMA, still requires the one-click package, but this creates a proxy for the UMA interface, and, uh, and that is 3D as well. So. This one's set to shape. Once, If you change these, like if I set this to bone, then it's gonna require a bone transform. Let me go ahead and just drop this in here. And then once I do that, then it, uh, it gives me the rest of the settings. And it's the same thing for the shape. The difference is when we select shape, it looks for a skin mesh render on the object that Salsa is on. If it finds one, it goes ahead and adds it to the skin mesh renderer slot here. And then it grabs the first blend shape index. Since I already had this set up, it's grabbing this one here. So when we select shape, we need a skin mesh renderer, and that skin mesh renderer needs to have blend shapes on it. If it doesn't have any, you'll get an error down here. Next, we have the min and max, and I do believe I went over this in the previous video, but basically this is the off position of the animation. So once this timing reaches uh, its, its point, uh, so we assume it's on, once it goes back off, it will animate back off to this position and it will animate on 
to the max position. And we can see what these are going to look like by hitting preview. And this is large. So now the preview only looks at this max position. It doesn't look at what the min position is. And uh, we can adjust that and see what it's going to look like. All right, so that is a shape controller, and uh, it's pretty simple. There's not a whole lot of settings involved there. We will see that in the bone controller. And we did go over this, bone settings and whatnot. We did go over that in the previous video, but the rest of this is all the same. So the animation timings are the same. Easing is the same. Uh, the controller type, we've selected bone. Uh, so we went through all of this. The transform computation constraints, we quickly went over this, but basically what this will do is it will filter out what elements of the transform you want Salsa to control. So if we want it to control the position, then we would have that enabled. Typically, it's going to be a rotation for bone rotation, like I did with this cube. And then there's scale. And scale and position probably won't be used nearly as often as rotation. So if we look at the other controller types, I'll only go through Sprite because uh, UGUI Sprite, Texture, and Material are all the same. If I switch to Sprite, it wants a Sprite renderer. Let me go ahead and add one. Okay, so I've got a sprite renderer on here. Uh, I can go ahead and drag that in. I can drag it from the component itself, or since uh, this box head has it on it, I can go ahead and drag from over here as well. So once I drag that in, then we see a minimum of two elements must be configured. And uh, we'll go into this on state here in just a second. But we can drag and drop two 2D elements here, or I can go ahead and configure them manually like this. And then you see I get two slots. And it's indicating over here that sprite 0 is going to be the rest sprite, which means the off sprite. So this is you can think of this as min. And then the next one will be max. Now, the interesting thing about this is we can have as many frames here as we want. And this animation will play to the full on. And then it'll animate back to the off. Now, this null rest, what this does is if you enable this, then the rest sprite is null, meaning that once it goes back to off, it will take the sprite off of the sprite renderer. So there will be nothing there. So it may or may not be useful to what you're doing, but that flexibility is there. And then, of course, this is very similar to the Vizim sorts that we saw. Let me go ahead and collapse this here. Uh, these we can sort these visims. We can likewise do the same thing. Where was I? I was in the bone, wasn't I? Okay, go back in here. Yeah. Uh, we can also sort these. So if you were dragging and dropping 2D sprites in here and you got them in the wrong order, uh, you don't have to delete anything. You can just resort things. If you do select to uh, drag and drop elements in here, uh, it will order them based on the selection. So if you just did a select and then a shift select to grab a bunch, then it's going to order them based on where you started with your, so if I were, these won't work, but if I were going to select these, uh, so it would order them as two, three, four. Let me go back here and lock that. Then if I wanted to put them in a specific order, like if I wanted it to be 3, 2, 4, then I would select 3, and then 2, and then 4, and then I would drag these in here. It's not going to do it because these are not sprites, but that, that way you can select specific ordering and have them applied when you do the drag and drop. I can delete all here. We can remove this. We don't need it. And uh, basically, in a nutshell, that covers most of the expression components. And you see that uh, shapes and bones and, and then these 2D elements are pretty similar all the way from name to controller type. And then once you select each individual one, the specific controls you'll need for those will be underneath. So that's going to wrap it up for this video, and in the next video, as I promised earlier, we are going to start going over the settings. So thanks, and we'll see you in the next video.